Well, good, good evening, everybody. I've never seen the council chamber so empty. I don't know whether it's because uh, Pippa and I have decided to have mulled wine and mince pies for afterwards that everybody decided not to be able to come. <laughs> but, uh, but, okay. It's all homemade mince pies and we're going to have mulled wine and we're going to have a very nice time. And I do hope that you do come down and join me. Right. Thank you. So, um, first of all, I've got to read about the filming at, at meetings. And uh, it's quite a long paragraph, so bear with me, please. Please note that this meeting may be filmed or recorded by the council for live or subsequent broadcast via the council's internet site or by anyone attending the meeting using any communication method. Although we ask members of the public recording, filming or reporting on the meeting not to include the public seating areas, members of the public attending the meeting should be aware that we cannot guarantee that they will not be filmed. But well, it's not a problem tonight because there's nobody up there. Members of the public participating in the meeting, e.g. making deputations, asking questions, making oral protests, should be aware that they are likely to be filmed, recorded or reported on. By entering the meeting room and using the public seating area, you are consenting to being filmed and to the possible use of those images and sound recordings. As chair of the meeting, I have discretion to terminate or suspend filming or recording. If, in my opinion, the continuation of the filming, recording or reporting will disrupt or prejudice the proceedings, infringe the rights of any individual or may lead to the breach of a legal obligation by the Council. And can I just add a little bit to that, please? Because due to an internet connection issue with the webcasting machine, the meeting will not be live streamed, but will be recorded and added to the website tomorrow morning. I'm very sorry for that, but someone has been obviously doing something wrong in this room, and we've tried our best to restore it, but it hasn't happened. So now we move on to apologies for absence. Madam Mayor, apologies for absence have been received from councillors Corley Harrison, Rosetti, Das Neves, Carlin, Bevan, Dixon, Da Costa, Emery, Hare, Barnes, Eviahor, Ross, Armet, Akata, and Hearn, and apologies for lateness from councillors Senate, Tucker, and Ejiofor. Sorry, Councillor Harker, Carter is there. My apologies. I caught him rushing out the stairs. So, uh, item three, declarations of interest. Um, I can't see anybody saying a declaration of interest, so I'll move on to item four. Can I call on the Chief Executive? Madam Mayor, I have no matters to report. Can I now call on the monitoring officer? Madam Mayor, I have no matters to report. Now, um, item six is the report on appointments to outside bodies. I call on the Labour Group Chief Whip, Councillor Rice. I move the recommendations in the report. No. Point of clarification. What's your clarification? I, I would like clarification as suggested uh, in point 4.1 of the report that Councillor Bull would be more suited to the role, considering Councillor Bull's public, uh, public admission that he used an anti Semitic term. Could you clarify why Councillor Bull has not been removed from this Council's Cabinet and why it's considered that Councillor Bull is the right person to be the representative of this Council on this outside body at this time? Chief Whip to answer. The, the role falls into Councillor Bull's uh, portfolio within the Cabinet and, and therefore that's why he's been accredited to this body. Okay, we move on to add. Oh, is that item agreed? All right. Well, I'm going to ask for a show of hands. All those in agreement with the report, please show.
Those against? Abstentions? Carried. Can we move on to the next item, please? Item 7 to consider requests to receive deputations and item 8 to receive reports from committees and cabinet. In relation to item 7, we have no deputations related to items on the agenda, and as set out in item 8, we will move to consider reports from Standards Committee, Cabinet, and Corporate Committee. Item 9 Report from the Standards Committee reporting out changes to the Constitution relating to the financial regulations, Council standing orders and members of Code of Conduct. I call upon the Chair of Standards, Councillor Puku. Thank you, Madam Mayor. The summary of considerations from the Standards Committee include an update to the Council's financial regulations, review of ethical standards, which includes updates to members' Code of Conduct, and changes to the Council standing orders and protocol. So I'm pleased to say that a lot of the recommendations encourage public participation in the democratic process, such as reducing the number of clear days from five to three, allow to submit recommendations, and also provide public responses. So Madam Mayor and colleagues, I move the recommendations as set out by the Standards Committee report. Are there any questions on the report? Can we agree the recommendations on the report? Thank you. Item 10, Cabinet report on additional housing revenue accounts spent on new build properties and temporary accommodation acquisitions. I call on the Cabinet Member for Finance and Strategic Regeneration, Councillor Adji. You have five minutes. Five minutes. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, um, I would have liked to have made uh, some statements, but I would move that uh, the recommendations as uh, um, outlined in the report be uh, agreed. Are there any questions on this report? Councillor Martin. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, does this alteration to the HRA uh, budget create room if large additional costs arise which are not related to buying or building homes? For example, if Phase 2 of the Grenfell Inquiry concludes that all high-rise blocks require sprinklers? Thank you. I'm sure there is a, a contingency to, to deal with that aspect in terms of uh, ongoing repairs and works in, in, the, um, in, in the HRA, which this is, this is separate. This is mainly to acquire um, properties that have been bought in the past under the right to buy to bring those back into use and also to enable new build. Are there any further questions? Uh, is the report and the recommendation agreed? Thank you. Item 11, Corporate Committee Report, Treasury Management 2018-2019. I now call on the Chair of Corporate Committee, Councillor Diakides. Thank you, Chair. I move. Goodness me. That's, I think you've broken the record. Are there any questions on this report? Are there, is the report and recommendations agreed? Thank you. Item 12, Approval of Council Tax Reduction Scheme for 2020-21. This is the report on the Council Tax Reduction Scheme for 2021. I call on the Cabinet Member for Finance and Strategic Regeneration, Councillor Adji, you have five minutes. Thank you. Thank you very much, Madam Mayor. I, I move that the recommendations be uh, agreed because um, this is... Um, I was going to stray there. Um, but, <laughs> yeah, so I, I, move, I, move, I move that um, the recommendations be agreed. Um, um, it's, it's towards a, a, a very good course. Are there any questions on this report? 
Are the reports and recommendations agreed? Thank you. Item 13, Dockless Bicycles, Pan London Bylaw. We now reach the report on Dockless, Dockless Bicycles. I call upon the Leader of the Council. Councillor Adji, you. Councillor Adji is going to, because Councillor Hearn is off sick. Chadwani? Councillor Chadwani, you have five minutes. <laughs> what am I going to do in five minutes? Okay, so uh, just for those of you who don't know, Doppler's bikes are the bikes that people can uh, rent per an hour or per minute or per day. Um, you might know these as the kind of Boris bikes or the Santander bikes that the GLA run. Um, so there are other bikes available, mo bikes, jump bikes, line bikes. And these products are really good to encourage people uh, to uh, cycle more, but they can also become a problem. So basically, people can come, hire a bike in, say, Hackney, and then finish off in Harringay and just leave it on the streets. Um, these bikes need to be hired uh, within an agreed time frame or removed by the operators themselves, but the council has no legal powers to enforce this. And these mean that sometimes these bikes can be left all over the borough, which I'm sure some of you have seen. So, as this is a London-wide issue, it's more productive to have a London-wide consistent method of dealing with this issue, which also gives local authorities some legal powers to enforce. So this report sets out a pan-London approach to regulate the use of doctors' bikes across the capital. Uh, for a bylaw to be created, uh, for this bylaw to be created, uh, the, each borough needs to delegate authority to the London Council's Transport and Environment Committee to make the bylaw. Therefore, I ask full council to agree in principle to, making a, uh, to the making of a pan-London bylaw to regulate doctors' bikes on the highway and public access. The rest of what exactly this bylaw entails can be found in 3.1 of the report and, uh, and also in 6.3 and 6.15 of the report. Um, this item has to come to full council as it's specified in our constitution um, uh, that bylaws can only be passed by full council and that's explained in 8.3.3 of the report. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you. But you went through that at the speed of knots. It was, it was, it was hard, hard keeping up with you. Are there any questions on the report? No? So, are, are the report, is the report and recommendations agreed? Now, look at the time, quarter to eight. I think we've broken the record. <laughs> now, please, I, I beg of you, we've worked hard all the year, and I want you to come downstairs and let's meet in a nice situation and have some hot mince pies, some mulled wine, cup of tea, coffee, biscuits, whatever. But please do come down, please. <laughs>